Let's talk housing market, more specifically the U.S. housing market. Before I start giving you the projections for 2022, I want to make a few disclaimers. Number one, these are coming from so-called experts who haven't really called this year all that well, so take it with a grain of salt. Number two, housing markets are very localized, so keep in mind that this is more an overall viewpoint of the U.S. housing market. There are going to be areas that go up, areas that go down, areas that stay relatively flat potentially. So just keep that in mind that you know the local economy, the job situation, taxes, et cetera, can all play a role in that. So just keep that in mind as we look, take a look at these. And I'll also give you my prediction of what's going to happen in 2022. Let's go. All right, so I have the articles linked down below, but basically you can see from this list, I have the company and group, the 2022 price growth estimate from them, the interest rate estimate from them. Then I have the current interest rate, average price growth, median price growth, average interest rate, and median interest rate. I always go off the median numbers personally, just because that's how I do things. But I want you to take a look at this. Goldman Sachs projects 16% price growth. I think that's pretty crazy considering we're about 20% this year, but who knows? And as a homeowner, that's amazing. But as a potential first time buyer or someone looking for investment properties, that could be a real problem. Now, again, housing markets are localized, but these projections are the overall housing market. Zillow at 13.6%. Keep in mind, this was a company that messed up their algorithm before, made some mistakes as far as acquiring those homes and is now offloading them at a loss. So take it with a grain of salt. Redfin has been pretty accurate. They're looking at about 3% price growth with 3.6% after, you know, interest rate hikes, essentially. Fannie Mae and the NAR survey. So the NAR survey is the National Association of Realtors survey. That's about 20 different firms. So that could include some of these, just keep that in mind. But that they came out, you know, in that five to 7% range on price growth. Although the NAR survey only has interest rates at 2.7%, I don't see that happening at all. I think that's ridiculously low. I would say minimum, I'm guessing about 3.5% on rates. But again, what do I know? I'm not a housing expert. But I like to put these numbers together and again, pull the median prices and say, okay, 5% growth in in home prices next year. I don't think that's unreasonable, especially considering this year and the fact that I don't think inflation is going to stop anytime soon. I do think inflation is going to be with us at least through the middle of next year. If I were to guess, again, something could change. Median interest rates and average interest rates, 3.5, 3.6. I don't think that's unreasonable. I could, I could see that being the case. I, I believe the last projection I saw the stock market's projecting about two Fed interest rate hikes, which would kind of put it in line with that quarter percent each time. So I would imagine by the end of the year, we could be between 3.5 and 3.75% as far as interest rates. And I think with the price growth, I don't think that five and a half percent is that far off. Now, I want to state a massive caveat. I think the supply chain issues, inflation, and potential economic issues, otherwise, you know, whether it's the current health situation or any of those other things, I think there's a number of things that could go wrong that could disrupt this and cause a pretty catastrophic situation. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm just saying I'm uncomfortable with how high crypto markets are how high the stock market is, what I'm hearing from people in general about the economy, despite the fact that everybody's talking about, you know, on all the talking heads are saying, hey, the economy's roaring back. I don't believe that fully. I think it's, it's a much more complicated picture. And I think there's a lot more things in general that can go wrong than can go right. That's just my thoughts. 
So with a major caveat, I would say I would guess rates to be about three and a half to 3.75% by the end of the year. And I think you're going to see price growth about 5% barring any significant issue arising. And I think there's actually a really good chance of that. And if it does, I think that could definitely crater home prices and cause a dip because I do think that right now, Regardless of what we're being told, in talking to regular people, inflation is having a major impact. And then economically, that has an impact because we're a consumer-based economy. Now, again, here's the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. And I want you to notice how low consumer sentiment is. We are almost down to the level of the 2008, 2007, 2008 financial crisis. And I think there's something to be said that oftentimes you'll see that this sentiment sentiment drops well before recession. So I think there is something to be said about people are not doing as well as maybe some of these experts are talking about. And that's something to factor in that maybe as hot as things are, once you get interest rate hikes and maybe some continuing issues, that there is potential that this might slow the housing market down or even reverse it at least a little bit. All right, so there's my thoughts. What are your thoughts? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What does experience tell you? I'm always looking forward to hearing other people's opinions on it because again, I think there's a lot to be learned. And again, I'm not a housing expert, but as a homeowner, as a real estate investor, as one of these people who's trying to figure out, okay, what is really going on here? I do feel like a lot of these projections are relatively reasonable in terms terms of what they're talking about. But again, I also state the massive caveat that I don't feel things are as we're told they are. And I have to be skeptical because these markets make no sense. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. I mean, you've got NFT selling for $6 million. Like, tell me that's not a bubble. Okay. I understand that that the market decides and a lot of these people can afford these digital artworks and things like that, but it's pretty ridiculous. Again, if you go and watch my video on things like IPOs and SPACs, you know, we're at record levels for all of these things. And it just feels so disconnected from the actual economy and talking to your average person that I feel like it can only run so hot for so long. So I'm interested to see, but again, comment down below what you think. Thanks so much for stopping by. Hope to see you again real soon. Bye.